Okay. Check your audio. All right, it'll be popping up any minute. Luke, if you don't mind being real quiet. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to screw these in. Baker, you got me? Cool. I might need your help with questions. It's, um, well, I can pull it up on my other screen. Cool. Can you hear me, Baker? We're live right now, Luke. He's on the live video. I'm going to turn the screen share off. Are you looking at the app screen right now, Baker? Yeah, if you don't mind. It'll reconnect. All right, so we're back on uh, Facebook Live Mondays every week, five o'clock, right here on the Apex Pro page. Um, and we're going to be talking about the friction circle again. So understanding what the friction circle is. And, uh, and how we can use it to improve. So we're gonna start off with just what is it? Uh, and what does it mean? What's the significance of it? Um, I talked about this last week, if you were here, uh, I appreciate you being a part of it. Um, and just wanted to expand on what we covered last week. Um, we got Mr. Baker Heppenstall in the room next door, looking at what's going on in there. All right, folks. So if you're joining, then you're probably interested in learning about what the friction circle is. So how can we use the friction circle to analyze our data and improve? That's the question I'm going to be asking. If you have any questions about the friction circle, also known as a GG plot, um, just drop it in the comments and, uh, and we'll get to it at some point during the show. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So as always, I'm Andrew Raines with Apex Pro. I'm here every Monday at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time to bring you the latest in Apex Pro data acquisition features, topics, discussion, how can you improve your driving using data? That's what we're here to discuss every single week. Um, if you can hear me okay and the sound's coming good, uh, you know, coming through on your end, tap the wow face. Um, that really helps. Uh, also share the video to your own page. Let people know what you're watching and what you're doing and your other friends that go to the track, let them know why you're faster than them, right? You're using data and they might not be. Um, that's a huge advantage. Uh, also, if you're gonna be at PRI, let us know in the comments. Will you be there? What dates will you be there? Um, we're excited. We're in booth 4839, booth 4839 at PRI. Um, if you're going to be at the show, um, come check us out. Eric Meyer says he loves the friction circle. Marlon someone's back. We got the usual suspects. All right, folks, uh, if you don't mind, tap the wow face, share the, uh, share the, the video here so other folks can see what's going on. And we will start looking uh, at this good example of a friction circle. Um, before we talk about how great this is uh, of an example of a good friction circle, let's talk about what's not so good about it. Um, so the first thing that's important with data acquisition is obviously getting reliable data. And what I'm looking at right now on this particular friction circle um, is the fact that, that it's not quite um, level across the top. Um, so if anybody noticed that, Go ahead and drop that in the comments. Did anyone notice that it's a little bit skewed? I'm going to use some, see how this line is kind of diagonal, right? It's kind of skewed a little bit. Um, does anyone know if you're, if you've seen this before, um, how can you mount your apex pro to cause this? Drop that in the comments. So what's happening here is the data isn't quite even, right? This driver is seemingly pulling a little more um, lateral G in right-hand corners than they are in left-hand corners uh, on the above zero. So positive, uh, you know, high lateral G and positive longitudinal G. 
comment in the and what happens how can you mount to uh to see it why does that cause that so with apex pro in particular tracy says not perpendicular we got a winner ding 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 nice work tracy could do nailed it so what happens here is the driver actually mounted this device so that the device and i don't have an apex pro on me luke you mind pass me one of those real quick so that the device was rotated towards the driver a little bit so if the the logo on the back of the unit is not facing the direction of travel directly that's going to skew the data in the friction circle slightly and it's going to make it uh, appear that um you know in certain corners um your longer your your high you know higher end of the longitudinal G trace up here, uh, and I'll I'll make that more obvious by circling it, is going to be a higher acceleration than on the left side over here, right? And that's just because the device is rotated. There's not a uh, software correction for y'all in the Apex Pro device. Um, the more software corrections you you put uh, you know in the algorithm on the unit to correct um, for different things in the data. Um, you know, the, the more that it actually changes the data and modifies it a little bit. Uh, cool. So I'm going to get rid of all of these little drawings that I've done. Thank you for participating, Luke. I appreciate it. Um, what is good about this friction circle? Let's, uh, I'm going to throw that question out there and you guys drop in the comments. What do you like about the look of this friction circle? Um, and I'll mention a couple of things while you're answering that. Uh, what's important to know, and we talked about this briefly last week, but what's important to know when we're looking at a friction circle or a GG plot, as they're also known, um, is what is it comprised of? Um, so longitudinal G and lateral G is what this is a graph of. Um, this right here is going to be zero longitudinal G. All right, on the uh, on the y axis, up and down, and then right here, that's going to be zero lateral G. Zero longitudinal G, zero lateral G. So zero longitudinal G, anything that's up here above zero is positive acceleration. That means we're on the gas pedal, accelerating. All right. Anything that's below zero down here means we're decelerating. The further down it is, the harder we're decelerating. So right in here, we might not even be braking, right? because that's just under, that might be off the gas, that might be a transition, um, that might be something else. But down here, we're definitely braking. All right, I'll get rid of that. Let's talk about lateral. So zero lateral G, important to note right here. If the plots are on the right side over here, that's turning to the right, All right? If they're on the left side, left of zero, that's turning to the left. Um, so that's important to know. It's, it's literally translated. So this is not where the load or the weight is in the car. This is literally, I'm turning to the right and I'm turning to the left. All right, let's check out the comments real quick. You guys are looking good. So what looks good about this friction circle now that I've given a little bit of information about what we're looking at? Um, and I, I realize I'm not giving another example and I'm doing that on purpose. So in isolation, if this is all you're looking at, um, and also you can notice that I've decided to color this friction circle uh, as blue coloring, I can change that uh, by going down here and moving this ticker right here. I can color the friction circle in the Apex Pro app um, by anything that's listed right here. I can change the coloring to red. Uh, I can color it by other data channels. So I can color the friction circle by apex score. So in this particular case, what that would mean is if I saw a bunch of red out here, a bunch of red plots that the apex score would be low at that point, which that does happen, but usually not at this much lateral G. This is negative one, two right here, this one. So that's probably gonna be pretty close to the limit of the tire. Um, this particular car was on Hankook RS4s, just for reference. I can keep sliding this down. I can color it by speed. This is actually a really helpful thing to look at, coloring the friction circle by speed, because you can see there's a combination of low speed and high speed corners with high lateral G. What are we seeing right here? All high speed. All high speed right here, right? That's going to be accelerating on a straightaway. So changing the variables we see down here in the bottom right can help us understand the friction circle because now I'm seeing green right here. When I, when I have green coloring on speed, that means fast, red means slow. So that means I'm wide open throttle. 
on the gas pedal right here, right? Look at all this yellow right here, all these medium speed corners. Um, this changes because track characteristics are different, but this is showing us right here that we've got a lot of relatively fast medium speed corners or high speed corners as well. Um, and in NCM, there's two really fast uh, right hand corners. Awesome. I hope that's helpful. So feel free. Mike says the D shape is good. T would be not good. That's right. So the reason that we can tell right off the bat that this is a good shape of a friction circle is that it's bowed around the edges, right? It's got this wide kind of arc. So what I'm gonna show you here to represent that, I'm gonna go back to a solid color. What we're looking at to know whether or not this is a positive looking friction circle or not is I wanna kind of take this and what I'm doing is just using like an annotation tool, but you could actually just screenshot yourself the Apex Pro app and draw over it and you could kind of see if it's a if it's a good friction circle or not. I'm gonna draw a line like this. The shallower that angle is at the bottom of these plots, the better the friction circle in most cases. Now that's not always true. You have to look at what this number is right here, negative 1.2, right? So this is negative 1.2 G. This is hard, 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 hard breaking. But notice how acute this angle is right here, right? It's very acute. This driver can bow their friction circle out. That means that their brake release, their ability to roll speed into corners and maintain a lot of G loading on the edge of the friction circle is good. Anything else anyone notices about this uh, friction circle that's particularly good? So the shape overall is good. It's got like that D shape. It's not a T, it's not bowed in the center where the driver's braking hard and then popping off the brake. This driver is obviously managing their brake pedal. There's one other really big thing that uh, it stands out immediately when I look at this friction circle where if, if I was doing some driver's data analysis and I went to this, this GG plot right here, I know immediately this guy's fast. Uh, without knowing anything about his car, without knowing anything about anything else. I'll pause for a second. Let's see if anyone knows. This might be a little tricky. What's good? What else is good about this friction circle right off the bat that we notice? Eric Meyer dropped a comment that might be very helpful. Start thinking like Eric's thinking. He's on the right path. I'm going to let the suspense build. Do, do. It's a hard question. If you're not used to looking at these, then it's going to be a little challenging. All right. So what we're looking at here and what I noticed right off the bat, Eric said, look at the center. How many data points do we see in the center? Not very many. The center of the friction circle is no bueno on the racetrack, right? We don't really need to be at the center of the friction circle. The only time we're really there is between transitional phases. I'm going right from left in like a slalom kind of section of corners, S's, right? Um, we want to avoid plotting points in the middle of the circle. Now to represent this, yep, Michael Trask also said very open in the center. Yep, all the, the majority of the data points are being plotted around the outside edge. What I'm gonna do here to help represent this, this bottom screen down here, I'm looking at the overview of the track. Uh, and what I'm going to do to help understand this is tap the play button down here in the bottom right corner. You can see it turned to a pause button. Now watch where the points are being plotted while the driver drives around the track. One, this can also help you understand the friction circle. Um, all right, let's pause it right there. But two, this can also represent what I'm talking about here, the reason the center is so bowed out. So what I'm looking at right now is the vehicle's position. This is entering turn three. I'm gonna look at my longitudinal G. This should be hard, hard, hard braking. And it is. Hard, hard, hard braking. And right here is where the, uh, the plotting stopped. So at this point, and you'll see where it is, the car's right here. Right, this driver was right in here. So what I'm trying to show there is how hard that the driver was decelerating where, when you're braking in a straight line, what that looks like on the friction circle. All right, 
So at this point, one negative 1.13 G, this is where the car is on the track. He's braking hard. That's where it's plotting points on the friction circle. That's accelerating, braking hard, hard, hard. Now what happens as the driver starts to release the brake? He's trailing off the brake into the corner. Look where we go here. Did you see how this, this uh, plotting right here that we saw went all the way around the outside edge like that? It went right around the outside of the friction circle. It didn't go up and then in. So if you're replaying your lap like this over the friction circle, what you should look for that's bad, it's bad. If I'm going into a hard braking corner like this and I see bloop, points go down, just follow my arrow. And then as you release the brake pedal and enter the corner, turn your hands, the plots go back up and then out. That's bad. That, that means you're not utilizing the friction circle. This driver is not doing that. This driver is seeing the exact progression that we want to see. Um, Tracy Gradu said lots of data points in a straight line. Um, that is true. That's, that's mostly just due to the nature of this racetrack. You'll notice that every track you look at, the concentration of the data points of the plotting is a little bit different. Um, with NCM, uh, there's a couple of, um, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy wide open throttle zones, you know, exiting turn three right here at the bottom of the track, uh, all the way into five, right? That's wide open throttle out of 10 wide open throttle down over tabletop. And then you got a big stretch of wide open throttle in the front straightaway. If you look at a racetrack like Barber or AMP or another track with much more condensed straightaways, you won't see the, the heavy concentration uh, of plotting up here in the positive uh, G's. You'll see it dispersed a little bit more. Um, it is pretty common to see a lot of this type of plotting on road courses. You tend to see uh, more data points on the right side of the lateral G uh, trace because most, uh, most racetracks, uh, most road courses tend to turn right more than they turn left. Um, so one more question before I introduce, uh, another set of data to our, our, uh, analysis here. If the, if a point's being plotted at this point on the friction circle, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller at this point on the friction circle, any one of these dots right in here or right in here, can you be on the gas pedal or the brake pedal? So if you're plotting a point right there on the friction circle, is if that's where the uh, the crosshairs are passing through, let's say this is like maybe an example's turn 10. This is going to be at the tightest part of the corner where the car is most laterally loaded. Can we be on a gas pedal or, or a brake pedal? Let me know in the comments. All right. So now I'm going to add in, this is a, this is a great example of what a good friction circle is going to look like. Um, and I also know this driver. Uh, I, I won't name any, any drivers in this situation, but this driver's got a great uh, looking friction circle. Um, I'm going to add in uh, another set of data here. Hopefully it's easy to find because I named it bad example, bad friction circle, bad GG. All right. I'm going to swap over to another driver's, driver's lap. Let's look at this one right here or even this one. Any of these laps will work. I'm going to stay focused on this one right here. Yeah, Jason Scott said lots of trail braking on that previous one. Yeah, that, that driver, the previous driver right here, evidenced by these outer edges, that's trail braking. Anytime the friction circle gets bowed very wide, almost as wide as the car can break, almost drawing a, an exact circle down the bottom outside edges, that means that that driver knows how to release the brake pedal. Let's look at this driver's data right here. Bloop. I'm going to use this lap. Eric says, what's the correlation between the shape of that friction circle and the apex scores? That's a very good example. So what we noticed up here, look at the shape of the friction circle. See how bowed it is, how wide it is. And if you go over here and look at negative 1.2, positive 1.2, negative 1.2, positive 0.4 plus under acceleration. This driver is constantly on the outside edge of the friction circle. And guess what data point also points us to that? Apex score. So the apex score, the, the more points that you're plotting on the outside edge of that friction circle, the higher apex score you're going to have. 
What's unique about apex score and what makes it different than the friction circle is the apex score is also taking into account track factors. So it's going, is the track uh, uphill or downhill while we're braking? Is the track cambered or cresting um, like turn uh, uh, deception at NCM? Deception is a corner that crests and the track falls away from you. Apex Pro models that and it accounts a little bit for the fact that the track falls away and you might not have maximum grip while the car is getting light. Um, that's how apex score is different. So what you notice is this lap that we're looking at here from this driver is an 84% apex score. Well, this lap that we're going to look at down here, it's a 70, right? Big time difference. All right, let's take a look at this data. Uh, so there's a couple of things that we'll notice uh, immediately that are a little bit different. One, this car is, is a lower power car because we're seeing 0.3 right here. And that's the highest that we see any plotting on the positive end, right? What else does anybody see? Just drop in the comments. What do you see just looking at this one for the first time? Uh, there's, there's certainly a couple of things, but the biggest difference immediately right away is what's in the middle, right? Let's just look at these back to back. I'm just going to tap between these two laps. What's in the circle? How many dots are in the circle on this 254 lap versus how many dots are in the circle on this 219 lap? Very different, right? Would you say that this driver is successfully trail braking, successfully rolling good speed into the corners? Probably not. Uh, something that we want to look at too here, look, outlier data points, negative 0.9. Right away, I can tell that this driver is not very confident. When anytime you see these outlier data points like this, there's enough of them down here too to go, okay, this car is definitely capable of negative 0.9G. This is an NA Miata, by the way, on a on a on at least a 200 tread wear. Um, we can see that the driver lacks confidence in braking because we don't see any points plotted down here. Um, we do see, however, our peak lateral is over 1G, our peak lateral cornering G. So... Lateral Gs are cornering. Longitudinal is braking and accelerating. Negative is braking. Positive is accelerating. So the fact that we're seeing all these data points over 1G lateral over here on the far right and left side of the friction circle, that shows us that this car has lateral grip of 1.2G. Well, the tire is usually capable of the same grip level uh, under braking. So let's, let's reference our good example. I'm going to go back to this lap up here. Uh, let's see what our peak braking effort is, just over 1.2 G. What's our peak cornering effort, peak cornering G-force? On the left side of the track, it's just over negative 1.2. On the right side, it's right smack dab at 1.2 G. So this driver is all edges of the friction circle. The absolute edge at the peak is 1.2. And then combined G somewhere in the middle, right, is right through here. Um, pretty telling. So when I go and look at this lap number three down here and I'm seeing this all the way down here and I'm seeing this and this, but then when I go in and I look and I go from here, Oh, where did all the, where are all the points? All right. Look how much less of an acute angle. It's a much steeper angle. Um, that's the primary difference between this lap. And if I go back to the 219 lap, all right, look, I actually have to come down here. I'm going to change the color here because I'm going to show how much more of an acute angle this other driver has, how much further on the outside edge of the friction circle they're using. We'll go right here. Remember this this unit is tilted slightly, so this data is going to have to be a little, it's going to be a little bit different. But now look when we go back. Look how much different that is. Look at the green line versus the red line. That's the amount of G that the, the driver on the 219 lap is utilizing that the driver with the red data is just not. Isn't that wild? That's a very big difference, very dramatic difference. So what I, what I would be looking at right now, if I were you, open up your open up your Apex Pro app and go start looking at as many laps as you can. Uh, on your friction circles for the track that, you know, you're going to next or you want to prepare for um, and start looking for some of these things that we're looking at right now. Something else that I see on this data, I'm going to go ahead and undo all this stuff. But again, what we're looking at here is the difference between the green and the red line. Um, 
if you would just kind of in your mind tilt that a little bit, right? We need to kind of correct it. This driver actually has their unit mounted perpendicular to the direction of travel. The first driver didn't as much. The, the difference would be even more dramatic, right? This line would be kind of down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this. Something else that we notice here is a hole. There's a hole right here. Uh, a hole of data points. That's not actually very uncommon. Um, that we see that a lot. Uh, and that's, that usually has to do with several different things, but there's just a lot, there's not very many situations on this particular track that are going to plot data points in this, uh, part of the, of the curve. Um, there might be some data correction that's missing plotting some points. There might just be some missing points in space that could be, uh, an issue with the product or, uh, what's most likely is that this driver is not confident filling in this space. And I'm pretty willing, I'm pretty, uh, pretty confident that if we were to go back and replay the lap, what we would see is data points plotted down here and then go bloop and then over. So entering left-hand corners for the most part, they're releasing the brake pedal hard, going back to zero Excel and then turning the corner. Now this driver is obviously substantially slower on this track and not as comfortable as the other driver is. There's a huge difference, but this is a very dramatic example to show the difference. It's much more likely that you're somewhere in between when you're comparing with uh, friction circles um, from different, um, you know, other drivers and stuff like that. Well, we can watch and see where these data points are plotted and you can watch the data points be plotted all the way around the track, just letting it replay like this and find out where you're accelerating at what combined G at what amount of G force uh, in different situations on the track uh, to start to really learn what you need to work on and what corners you can start to work on. Um, but brake release is the biggest thing that, that is being displayed to us in, uh, in the friction circle. All right. So what I'm going to do now is overlay the two, the good and the bad. So we've got the, uh, the bad friction circle or the bad example can be improved. Let's look at the difference here. So first of all, we notice that the red is skewed a little bit, right? It tends to trend like that. We want to, we would want to equalize it out, but let's just take a look at these huge gaps, right? Enormous, enormous gaps. And these cars don't have that much of a, of a grip level difference. Their, their grip capability um, is pretty similar. And we know that because we're looking at the peak lateral for both cars, very similar, right? There is a higher concentration of good behavior, red dots in these lateral G areas, but the fact that the blue driver can attain those means that he should be able to do the same down here, he or she, I don't even know who this is. Um, that's really helpful. So if you have someone else's data, I would overlay uh, your two laps and look at your friction circles. And the way we did that was I just, I just pressed and held the second lap to have it appear. Um, to add in multiple driver data, you tap add another session right here uh, on your phone. If you scroll down to the bottom of the data session, that will be down at the bottom. Really helpful. So that's how you look at, uh, you know, the friction circle model to, to make decisions, the friction circle plot, the GG plot. Uh, it's called a GG plot because it's lateral G and long, longitudinal G, GG, GG plot, G versus G. Uh, and a professional driver, the faster the driver, the more bowed this shape is going to be, the closer to the outside edge they're going to constantly be able to be, and the higher concentration of dots you're going to see in those areas. So the concentration is important, the shape is important, uh, and then any irregularities or weird things that you might see are also important to notice. Um, so those are the three things I would look for, concentration of dots, shape, are there any irregularities like the fact that this is skewed a little bit up here? Um, that's something that you need to consider. And I would recommend again, go through and look at every lap. You can see on these lower laps, the shape of the, of the circle does change. Now the screen uh, will actually change a little bit based on where the G's were plotted so that it shows you, you know, a better viewing. It's just kind of a UI change. You notice that the screen adjusts a little bit there. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I see a couple. Dakota said, really cool breakdown, breakdown. Glad he tuned in. Thanks for joining, Dakota. Appreciate it. John Allen, how you doing, man? Good to see you. I bet you've got some good friction circle traces. I'd like to see some of some John Allen spec me out of data. Uh, send it over. We'll take a look at it sometime. 
Um, Eric says, if we switch to the long G trace with these two laps, do we see the same info, but in a different way, Eric, you're so good at leading questions, man. It's awesome. Uh, so what Eric said is if we go to look at a long G trace, a trace is going to be a, you know, like a speed trace. This is what I would call a, uh, a plot or, or something like that. Um, he's talking about more of a graph. Can we see the same information displayed in a different way? So to do that, uh, and I'll, I'll do a little interface exercise here. We're going to tap this arrow on the left. And that's going to take us back to the speed trace. Now, what we're seeing on the speed trace is distance and speed. So distance over the course of the track on the x-axis. This side is x-axis. This is y-axis and speed. Now, I can change speed to long g. So now what we're seeing is distance over the course of the track and then g-force, long, longitudinal g-force. Everything above zero, wham, gas pedal accelerating. Everything below zero, on the brake pedal. Not always using the brake pedal the same amount, right? This is obviously braking right here, but it's not quite the same peak as down here. This is hard, hard braking right here. Not quite the same as right here, right here, right? We're not always stomping the brake pedal to the floor. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Now, what I can do and what Eric wanted to do is overlay the two laps. So I've got blue as my good behavior lap. I'm going to press and hold my second lap. Now, first of all, we notice it switches to the gain loss channel when you overlay two. We can talk about that channel another time. So now I've got my red lap displayed and the blue lap displayed. Now, remember these cars can achieve about the same negative uh, longitudinal G. The first thing you'll notice is the Miata is red and the blue car is a Camaro. It's an SS1 LE Camaro. The red positive longitudinal G is as hard as that Miata can accelerate, right? About 0 0.25, 0 0.3. Whereas we see peaks way over 0.4 for the Camaro. So that's the first thing we notice. What, what else do we notice on here? Look at this gap. The driver in the Camaro is breaking almost negative 0.2 G right here. And this, this driver is breaking at negative 0.5. Now you will see that from time to time in, in a Miata. But what you're really looking for is where does the driver, these are very different cars, where does the driver in the Camaro start braking versus where does the driver in the Miata start braking? The braking effort's probably going to be less in most places in the Miata, but what's interesting here is that the driver in the Miata is carrying significantly less speed almost everywhere. We notice here the Miata driver doesn't have to brake at all, whereas the Camaro driver does. But it's not that different, right? The Miata driver's not actually braking that later in a lot of these places. All right. Kind of interesting right here. They're breaking at the exact same point. Similar here. Um, so to answer your question, Eric, yes, we are looking at very similar data here. Uh, we can also swap channels down to the lateral G channel and see the same thing. So now our peaks down here, negative lateral G would be left-hand turns, positive lateral G up here would be right-hand turns. This is the same information that we see displayed on the friction circle, just displayed as a graph. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, wrap things up here in just a second, but I really appreciate you joining in to hear all about the, uh, the friction circle. I hope this was something that's interesting to you. This is something that I've always wanted to learn more about, and I've always you know, seen it in video overlays with the little dot bouncing around the outside edge of the plot on the, you know, on the little uh, like target looking thing and that sort of thing. And I was, what is that? You know, I need to, do I need, is this something I need to know? Um, and I think this is, it's really, really good information to have. And there's just only a couple of things you need to know, but I can't underemphasize or overemphasize, I'm sorry, how important volume is. Start looking at a lot of this data, start looking at all your laps and try to ask yourself questions. Why is this different? Try to make sure that you get the, the interface usage out, right? Use, use the Apex Pro app use whatever data analysis product you're using, use it enough that you just start to assimilate with it and, it. and the software is no longer a problem. Think about the software you use at work every day, whether it's a CRM, Microsoft Excel, inventory tracking, whatever kind of um, you know, software you're using, you use it enough that you speak its language, get that way with your data. Um, and fortunately with this being an app on your phone, instead of sitting there looking at you know, your Instagram feed, or going through uh, Facebook or, you know, you know, commenting on somebody's post or whatever it is, which we all enjoy doing, right? Uh, hop into your Apex Pro data and just start moving this stuff around. Um, if you're on a flight, 
you know, uh, just start looking. You don't need Wi-Fi uh, connection or cellular to look at your friction circle plot. Just go through there and start looking at it. Make notes in the app about it. Make notes on your on your notepad about it. Start to understand this stuff. Ask yourself questions about it, and it'll really open doors for you going forward. Um, a lot of fun. A couple things coming up, guys. Next Monday, we are at Jayzilla Track Days at Barber Motorsports Park. That's a week from today, um, Monday, November 25th. Uh, if you or someone that you know is in the market for an Apex Pro, maybe you want to buy one for yourself for Christmas, hand it off to your wife or your husband or significant other, uh, that would be the event to go to because if you decide to purchase an Apex Pro between now and then from apextrackcoach.com, you get 20% off the Jayzilla event next Monday. It's about, I think it's a $40 discount, $50 discount on the track day. Killer deal. Um, we will be there on site. We'll have Apex Pro demos available as well. Might even be able to offer that uh, on site as well if you decide to pull the trigger then. So that's going to be really fun. Um, we've got Intro to Pro Coaching coming up at Road Atlanta. Um, that's also going to be a great event. That's where uh, Eric Meyer is putting together uh, a group um, of folks. And we're going to basically offer um, professional coaching at a discounted rate uh, for a larger group of people. It's not going to be one-on-one -on -one coaching, but it's going to be kind of group coaching. Um, I'll post the link here in just a second. I think there's a couple of spots left. Eric, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, I know that we're really close to being full, uh, but Eric will be there. I will be there. Um, we'll be doing everything from a little bit of setup work and talk about, you know, your alignment, uh, the weight of the car, weight distribution in the car, that sort of thing. Tire pressures will be taken throughout the weekend um, to video and data analysis. We'll be doing data analysis for everybody, video on kind of a select basis. Um, and then the real, the real meat of what coaching is the mental game, getting inside of your head, helping you unlock um, whatever that, you know, next level of performance is, right? We're trying to get you there. And a big part of that is just understanding what's going on in your head while you're driving. What are you thinking about? Um, or what are you not thinking about? Or how do you not think while you're driving? Just go drive. Um, and that's the beauty of a coach. So I dropped the link into Intro to Pro Coaching. Um, if you'll be at PRI, again, like I asked at the opening of the show, let us know we're in booth 4839 with HMS Motorsport. Um, those guys are killer. We're pumped to do that again this year. This will be our third or fourth, fourth year, fourth year at PRI starting to date myself already. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing you there. We'll have uh, apex pro OBD two units with us. Um, that's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So we hope to see you guys in Indy. All right, everybody, let me figure out how to exit out of this thing. Always takes a minute. All right, we'll see you next Monday. Uh, we're going to be doing something. I don't know. We're going to be out at Barber, so we might be doing Facebook Live from Barber. We'll try to announce it ahead of time, but just plan on joining us on the Apex Pro page at 5 o'clock Central Time a week from today. See you then.